and I was using the mesh. <laughs> Oh, actually, I was using one more. Oh, God. Here. And I was talking about how this action when I close in, right? Yeah. <laughs> On the other side, it's actually a lance up. Hopefully, it kind of make a little bit of sense. Any other questions, Chris? <clears throat> so. We established that traditional martial arts. Yeah. They're a lot more older, for one yeah. thing. Second, they include weapons training. It's always about weapons training. Right. Yeah. And third, you train either killing or peaceful, ideally at the same time, Yeah. but never in the middle. Sometimes you have to train in the middle, but you shouldn't exceed 10% of your training if we use the criteria of actual very traditional martial art because when they went to battle they had weapons right nobody no soldier go to war empty-handed so these guys were on horses they had swords they had spears and so they were trying to kill the enemy but at the same time they always practice not hurting the enemy because they want to take live prisoners that happened a lot in china right but playing in the middle that that's a situation where for some reason they're in war and their skill was so bad they lost their spear in the middle of a fight and then they pulled their sword and they managed to lose that too and then they pulled a dagger and they managed to lose that. They get this arm three times. Okay, now I gotta use empty hands. So that was rare. More like nowadays, uh, like a soldier, they got their machine gun, they got their sidearm, and they got their knife. If they lost all three, then they'd have to go empty hand, which is really, really rare, right? You have to be extremely poor skilled for that to happen. And if your skill was that bad, chances are you already got your head cut off. If the guy's that many times better than you, right? So they did train empty hands, but it was very, very rare. And then during peacetime, Chinese martial art was modified into empty hand martial art. And then they took that as some great stuff. But if they look at history, it wasn't. It was just the leftovers. Xing Yi would be a prime example of that. It was a spear art modified into empty hand art, not the other way around. Unlike later on in peacetime with the village arts. So, and that's around the world because uh, Almost all civilization come from tribes, of course, and if you look at all the tribal war arts, they're all weapon-based. Since, since the beginning of time, we're either clubbing each other or we're throwing things at each other. So I guess you gotta ask yourself, Yeah. why would you wanna... Do this to somebody. Well, why would you wanna look for traditional martial arts instead of modern ones? Well, there's nothing wrong with looking at traditional martial art versus modern, and that's your choice, but... You can't make an educated choice if you don't even know what the word traditional means. And you start bad-mouthing it or whatever. Like, I think you gotta be very precise with what you're talking about. And it depends on the country. If you're looking at China, then traditional martial art by definition, if you go all the way back to see the truth of it, was all war art. And then after all these revolutions and all these political stuff, it gotta turn into dance and folklore dancing and... I mean, you look at nowadays wushu, it doesn't even resemble what it used to be, right? And I think it's important. I mean, you, you, you decide what you want, but at least look at it clearly, right? If you look at modern Chinese martial art, most of it is empty hand. Nothing wrong with that, but now you're playing in the middle. The middle is not the war stuff and not the restrained stuff so much, not in one skill set, right? So that's why to me, history is important and where you want to develop this. And it directly changes the way you move. Like a minute ago, when I move on you, I can hurt you or not hurt you or kill you with the exact same technique, not different techniques, which is a modern thing. This is very, very important because it changes the way you move. And when I throw you without much effort, I couldn't have done that if I hadn't trained weapons first. It's not because I'm good at martial arts, because of the weapons training that educated me, right? So this thing is a loop, right? And it's not a genius thing. It's been around for thousands of years. It's just somehow we lost it. And by somehow, I mean the government intervened <laughs> and stopped prosecuting Kung Fu guys. So, um, but that's true for any other country. If you look at American traditional martial art, like, you know, we drop kids off to Taekwondo, Karate, whatever, and when we laugh at it, we're like, oh, that's traditional stuff doesn't work, so we just take our kids there. But do they know what they're talking about when they're saying it's traditional? What do you mean Taekwondo is traditional or Karate? 
That happened in around World War II. That's not that long ago where a lot of the servicemen went to Korea and Japan and they came back with black belt, a shodan. A shodan is really first degree black belt. In Japanese, it means a beginner's level, not a teacher. You're finally qualified to call yourself a beginner. That's what black belt literally means. Suddenly, these guys came back from their service time and got their black belt, right? And when they came back to North America, suddenly now these show that beginner level is now experts. They, they self-proclaimed. They started opening martial arts schools and call it traditional martial art, and they make a lot of money by teaching kids, which is fine because it builds character and gives them discipline and flexibility. But the first thing is these guys weren't masters. They were just black belts. And when they came back from the military, they started opening McDojo's, right? Second thing is, those arts weren't that traditional anyways. Taekwondo is 90% Shotokan. Shotokan is like based on Okinawa karate. It's only based on 1920s. That's not traditional. It's pretty new. And he only modified it and made it less lethal to teach the Japanese because the Koreans didn't want to teach the Japanese at that time because the Japanese were always picking on the Okinawa. That's well documented in history when he went to Japan to teach. I'm not going to name a sensei because everyone knows who it is. And out of respect, you know, I'm just going to not name him, right? But if you look at Okinawa martial art, that's traditional because it goes way back, right? Before they dumbed it down into something for universal, university children in Japan, and before, after World War II, when these experts who only had a black belt came back and started teaching McDojo's. If you look at all the way back at what happened, we want to look at Okinawa karate, which is roughly 70% Kung Fu, really, from Fujian province, if you want to look at that. And that was all based on killing people if they needed to. Wasn't that long that Ichiru guy quit teaching because one of the students killed a guy with one hit, right? Well, that's why they're training graveyards. That's why you're training in the dark. That's why weapon self-defense was there. That's why it's all close-range combat. If you look at traditional karate, it was very reality-based self-defense. Not this stuff that we see nowadays, right? So when you insult traditional martial art, I think it's like, you don't know. If you look at the history, you won't, maybe, you, maybe you shut your mouth, right? And I'm not a karate guy, but I just want to, just, I want to you know, stick up for karate too, but so. So even North American traditional martial arts, if you actually do your research, you go, oh, it's not what I thought it was. I'm not saying all traditional martial arts are the best thing since baby Jesus. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, look, if you're going to say something is good or you're going to say something is bad, at least do some research to know what you're talking about. History. So rather it's Chinese martial art traditional or American traditional martial art. So the word traditional gets thrown around a lot, right? So it doesn't mean yeah. just old. Yeah. And it doesn't mean just what we see in the movies, you know, people bowing, wearing uniforms and... Even that is like, the idea of wearing uniform is not traditional, it's actually modern. Oh, we don't do traditional martial arts, we don't wear uniforms. And I laugh when I hear that because wearing uniforms is a modern invention. Look at Chinese martial arts when they wear the silk pajamas. That's like a post-cultural revolution thing that the communist government did, wearing this shiny pajamas, right? When Chinese people train, if you look at older pictures of traditional martial artists, like you look at Yip Man wearing the, the gown, and now people wear to copy Yip Man because that's my uniform. It wasn't a uniform. That was just everyday clothing Chinese people wore. Like, you know how me and you wear jeans and t-shirt? That's because that's what we wear in 2022. That button Chinese gown that people wore, that was just what people wore as normal clothing in China. My grandfather wore it all the time. He wasn't a martial artist. They didn't wear uniforms in China. It's not, <laughs> that's a modern invention. Same as geese and all that. I guess that, that's what I'm talking about, the perception of what is traditional. A lot of it comes from what we see in the movies yep. and what we see in the dojos. Yeah. And, you know, if they are misrepresenting traditional martial arts, yeah. then, you know, the average person will have no way of knowing. Right? Yeah, well, you, like, and you see that in the, um, in the blood of Kata where, okay, you look at Taekwondo form. I mean, remember that cute Natalie was here a couple of episodes ago and she yeah. taught me Taekwondo form. There was a movement like this in it, I remember, right? Yeah. Well, that actually came directly from Shotokan, which is Okinawa karate. That movement, I don't think when kids do it, they know what that's for, right? So, um, why don't I get up and we'll play a little bit right now, okay? And just to show you what I mean. All right, guys, so. Looking at traditional martial art that doesn't work um, like kiddie karate class. Well, kiddie karate class, remember, 
not only taught me this, right? This movement, what is it for? Crystal, can you please come in? This movement is in karate, it's in shoulder cannon, it's in taekwondo. If you do it with a wave, it's in systema, it's in Fujian white crane, it's in a million martial arts, right? So, I'm just going to hit press very lightly. I'm going to torque. Some power. That's about 2% power. Now, without torquing, okay, just as much power or more, right? It's better because I don't have to turn. And because I don't have to turn, I don't have to telegraph. It's also better because when I'm really close, I don't have the room to turn. Now I'm forced to use my elbow. Why not just do this, right? How is it used? It can be used, like, you can use it off a box set, for example. Yep. I come in like this. If I get in here, there it is. You won't see this because I'm not torquing, right? You punch it in this way. It can be done in this. You can't see this because I'm not torquing, right? Um, if he takes a swing. You can't see this because I am not forking. Right from here, you can't see it, right? It can also be done like he punches, five punches with the other one. Again, he can be used as a pro. He won't see this because I'm not forking. It can also be done with the forearm, like if you punch it, punches again. Again, here, look at this. Try not to fall, Chris. If I just push, nothing happens. If I kind of fall upward a little bit, like this, just like the form, you can't resist this type of pressure, right? Down it goes. He's holding on to my arm, can you see? If I use it as a figure four, right? <laughs> Maybe let's do it on this side, I can see it better. But... So following the form, the power is actually not from this hand, it's actually from this hand. So when Chris punches it like in here, the power is not from this hand, it's from this hand. Try not to fall, Chris. So if I push, can't move Chris. If I file with this arm upward, try not to move first, he's moving. Right? Because of the angle. If I do it twice, like in some counters, if I do it twice, it punches, he'll go one, and then go two, now he's definitely falling, right? Thanks, Chris. So, we get back and talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so that was like a little bit of an idea of how to use this movement, right? So that, that's an example I was trying to talk about how, you know, Chris, you know, the traditional martial art, rather is east or west, is, is good to kind of look at the history and look at the application before you decide whether something is good or is bad. Neither way it doesn't matter, um, but it's good to look at how things actually work first, right? Um, that's the same with like, I think we were talking about this before, like, hey, what do you do if a guy grabs you? Like every time I get that question, it's like, if you look at it from a very, very, very traditional point of view, then again it goes back to weapons. Once you throw a weapon into the mix, it completely changes the context, right? 